We have just discovered the world's largest drum, and it is way bigger than those drum-shaped buildings back there. This drum is tens of times bigger than planet Earth. So yes, that means it's in space. Now, drums are the most common type of membranophone, musical instruments that primarily make their sounds by vibrating membranes, or essentially surfaces. Technically, kazoos, merlotons, and swazzles are also in that category. And yes, I haven't heard of the last two either. But how does a drum actually work? In all drums, you basically have a taut membrane connected to a rigid shell, a bit like this. To make a sound on the drum, what do you do? You hit it. What that does is it sends ripples, surface waves, out in all directions across that taut membrane. But it's what happens when those surface waves hit the edge that's important. The membrane is fixed at the edges, so those ripples get reflected back towards the center. This causes those waves to interfere with one another, setting up standing waves or resonances. Look at a drum in slow motion and you'll see that the membrane is just vibrating up and down. There's little sense of motion along it. These standing waves are the natural ways that the drum wants to vibrate given its shape. But even a circle, a pretty basic shape, can lead to some quite complicated possible patterns. In reality, depending on quite how the drum was hit, you'll get a sum or superposition of lots of these different patterns, which will affect how the drum sounds. And the reason why a drum creates sounds is the vibrations of the membrane move the air molecules around, sending out sound waves. Now, I've mentioned before how Earth's magnetic shield is something of a massive musical instrument. That's because the analogues of sound in space can bounce around within our magnetosphere, forming various sorts of resonances in the same way that sound waves do within musical instruments to form notes. But for something like a drum, what we need are boundaries. Now, the outer boundary of our magnetic shield, the magnetopause, is very much like an elastic membrane. It is far from static. It can expand and contract depending on the strength of the solar wind, and it even supports surface waves, ripples which usually travel down the sides and get lost in the magnetospheric tail. But some 45 years ago, it was proposed that this magnetopause might also be able to oscillate like a drum. To understand this better, physicists often take the complicated shape and geometry of the magnetosphere and simplify it considerably, morphing it into a rectangular box. Here we have the Earth's magnetic field lines pointing straight up, bounded by the northern and southern ionospheres on the top and bottom. The magnetopause separates these field lines from the shocked solar wind on the right. Now, if you hit that membrane, ripples will spread out, both north and south. These surface waves might get reflected back by the ionosphere, though, and form a standing wave of the surface, just like with a drum. Pretty simple. But science is rarely ever as simple as that in practice. You see, that 45-year-old theory is an incredibly simple description of a complicated environment. Any of the many factors which have been neglected could mean these drum-like oscillations simply don't occur. So you might go, okay, well, just do a better theory. And that's what we did, sort of. By using more representative models and even full-blown simulations, we reckoned this magnetic drum should still be possible, at least some of the time, at Earth and it gave us an idea of the properties they should have. But the real test, of course, is nature itself, observational evidence. But in space physics, looking for observational evidence for something is often like searching for a needle in a haystack. 
you need the conditions to be just right, you need your satellites to be working and located in exactly the right place during those conditions, and you need to be able to rule out all other plausible explanations for your data. Quite frankly, it's hard. To find this magnetic drum, what you really need are observations from lots of spacecraft at the same time. Firstly, you're going to want to measure the thing that's actually triggering the note. A nice clean strike on the boundary is what you really want, something very much akin to hitting the surface of a drum with a stick. It doesn't have any frequencies of its own. Secondly, you're going to need at least two spacecraft that are going to see that boundary pass over it so you can see that it's actually moving and then you're going to want another satellite that can hear the sounds created by the drum. Only with all of that evidence together should you hopefully be able to rule out all possible other magnetospheric instruments. That's a really stringent list of conditions, so it's almost not surprising over 45 years nothing turned up. But thanks to NASA's Themis mission, we were finally able to find that perfect event. And it fit our expectations beautifully. The observations matched a superposition of both the fundamental mode and the second harmonic. So in reality, what happened probably looked a bit like this. So that's how we found that Earth's magnetic shield should boom like a drum when hit by a strong impulse, a discovery some 45 years in the making. These drum-like oscillations should impact upon our space environment, almost globally affecting things like the radiation belts, aurora, even our ionosphere. Also, because it's a natural way of a planetary magnetosphere to respond, they should happen at other planets as well. So as you can see, we're far from drum. I mean done. <laughs>